for those that are balanced or dual access, that's that's basically um, those those persons who are neither um, prone to sequential or to associative thinking, but they are right in that balanced middle. And so for persons who occupy that space, and I, I believe that uh, Frank Sopper, who's uh, the mastermind behind the survey, tells us that I think less than 5% of the population yes. Uh, scores as as dual access or balanced, and so these are the persons who can um, equally. Uh, I like the word amb ambidextrous. You know, they can play left or right-handed, so they can find themselves in a space uh, requiring either of those kinds of energies, and they can uh, readily conform, if you will, to what's being asked of them in the the task at hand or in the relationships. Uh, that they're they're working uh, to accomplish their goals. The challenge, though, is that uh, people who have dual access can take in loads of information. So it's it's not just uh, a matter of looking at the menu and considering what's for dinner, but perhaps asking the waiter as well. Right? What what seems to be the restaurant's best? Um, uh, what it's noted for, and then looking around the restaurant and see what other people have ordered, and then speaking to the people that you're with for the evening, what they too might be having for supper. So persons who have of dual access are just taking in scads and scads of information via both their processors. And so making decisions at times can be a challenge. And they also live with what we call uh, buyer's remorse because they knew all the possibilities that could have made for a good dinner that night, taking into account all the information. And then perhaps they're afterwards wondering, well, maybe I should have, you know, decided on the on the fish rather than the beef, right? So well, no, that's bingo, bingo. And that's why I, I fall in that category. And that's why I have decision fatigue. And that's why clarifying and organizing was so exceptionally mm -hmm. challenging for me. And, and by then understanding that I fell into that balanced area, I needed strategies because I fatigued and I had decision fatigue and my other colleagues weren't experiencing that. So they would say to me, well, they weren't having challenges in that area. And so why was I, why, why did I pick up a piece of paper? And it just, you know, I was just, just like you were saying, I just got flooded almost with these possibilities of where it could go. And I would have to really think about it and, and mull it over. And, and it wasn't procrastination, but that was the only, so, you know, that was the only explanation was, well, you're procrastinating, make the decision. And I'm like, yeah, but I need to mull it over. I need to think about it. Yeah. And that's why if I have to do that too much, if I go out to a restaurant, I'm like, what are you ordering? And I'm like, I'll have, I don't want to make a decision. I don't want to make any more decisions. And there'll be some of you listening where you'll be like, oh my gosh, nobody's ever kind of talked about it that way. And that's what I get with people that have that balanced. 